So, good evening everyone. So, this time I'm going to discuss the curriculum evaluation in the classroom. So, we all know that classroom is the first site or place where data for curriculum assessment is gathered so the teacher and administrator can collect data in the classroom using variety of tools so the first one is the test result test results are one of the data that can be used as evidence to support educational decision making so it is also used for other purposes such as communication and evaluation which do not automatically result in increased student learning. So for the second one is the anecdotal record. This is a descriptive narrative record after a specific behavior or interaction occur. They provide information to families and give insight into identifying possible development delays of the student. So for the third one is the checklist. It is a tool student can use to make sure they met all requirements of an assignment that will be assessed. The teacher creating the checklist decides which features of the assignments are important enough to factor in how the work will be graded or otherwise evaluated. For the fourth one is the interview guide. It is a, simply a list of high-level topics that you plan on covering in the interview with high-level questions that you, that you want to ask, that you want to answer rather under each topic. So next is the observation guides. This an outline provides to the pre-service teacher as way to scaffold and support their objective of balance literacy practices taking place in the classroom structure. Next is the personality inventories. This is the tool that career counselor and other career development professionals use to help people learn about their personality types. Um, it reveals information about individual social traits, motivation, strength and weaknesses and also the attitude next is the rating scale test it allows the teachers to indicate the degree of frequency of the behavior skills and strategies displayed by the learner and it is also give the student information and goals and improving their performance for the last one is the interest inventories. It is a survey um, administered to the student in order to gather information about their interests or to determine for their specific field or activities. In short, it is an instrument to measure and evaluating the level of an individual interest. And now, let's proceed to the curriculum evaluation at the school or system level. So, the first one is the opinion polls. So, as a teacher, we can able to discover the student and how they participate in this active learning exercise to incorporate classroom knowledge in, practical, in a practical settings. So, the next is the survey. So... Survey is an activity where all the learner in the group need to ask each other question to find information which they need to analyze and report to the class. The next is the focus group discussion. Um, in focus group discussion, it is involved gathering people from similar background or experience together to discuss specific topic of interest. It is a form or of qualitative research which questions are asked about their perception, attitude, beliefs, opinions, or ideas. Next is the follow-up studies, um, graduate tracer studies. So, these are the surveys mostly used by the higher education institution um, to follow up on 
undergraduate and find out what they are doing in, in so far as educational and training they have received from alma mater. And the next one is the standard evaluation instrument. So it is a process, impact, outcome, and summative evaluation. So before you are able to measure the effectiveness of your project, you need to determine if the project is being run as intended and if it is if it is reaching the intended interest of an audience. So the next one is the result of district or national test. So the school gathered and analyzed data or implementation of the curriculum and it can also do research activities. Let's proceed to model of curriculum evaluation. The various models for testing instruction have been established by curriculum scholar and practitioner. Each model is a product of countless art of research by curriculum expert attempting to determine the worth of a specific curriculum. So the first um, model was developed by Malcolm Probus in 1971. So Probus identified four major stages of conducting curriculum. So the first one is the determining program standard. Um, it is identify how quality of evaluation will be judged. They can also they can also use planning and evaluation as well as for meta evaluation, evaluating the evaluation. Many organizations have guidelines which addresses issue of quality and ethics together. So the next one is the program performance measure. So it measures the performance and conducting an evaluation to improve the quality, effectiveness, or efficiency of the program activities. And also it also determines what the effects of the programs are. So the third one is the comparing performance with standard. So it determines the degree of variation between actual performance and standard. If the first two phase have been done well, so the third phase of the controlling process is comparing performance with standard. It should be straight forward. For the fourth major stages, which is determination whether discrepancy exists between performance and standard. So, Provost model has been called the discrepancy because it compares performance with standard to determine whether there is a discrepancy between the two. So, this model enables the curriculum evaluators and administrators of school to collect and gather concrete evidence on how the curriculum satisfies the set standard. Next is the Taylor Models Curriculum Evaluation. So, Rob Taylor proposed seven steps for evaluating curriculum. So, the first one is the establishment of goals and objective. The second one is the classification of the objective. The third one is the definition of the objective in the behavioral term. So, the fourth one is the identification of situation in which achievement of objective could be shown. The fifth one is the selection of criterion of measurement procedure. The sixth one is the collection data about pupils performance. And the last one is the comparison of finding with the stated objective. So these seven stages lead to revision of the objective. This model is a cyclical type models. Next model is the Staffel Beam CIPP model. So this model used to give a rational reason a selective program or curriculum to be implemented. It is a process served to provide feedback to individuals to account for the activities of the program or curriculum. Evaluation model known as the CIPP 
C stands for context evaluation. I stands for input evaluation. P stands for process evaluation. And the last P is stands for product evaluation. The first one is the context evaluation, with which it serves as planning decision by identifying unmet needs and use opportunities of and underlying problems that prevent the meeting of needs or the use of opportunities. The next one is the input evaluation. So, input evaluation, it serves as in structuring decision by project and analyzing the alternative procedural design. And the third one is the process evaluation, which it serves as implementing decision by monitoring project operation. And the last one is the product evaluation, with which serve as recycling decision by determining the degree to which objective have been achieved and by determining the cost of the obtained result so the last slide i'm gonna i'm going to show to you the the cipp model as you can see in the picture um the first one is the context evaluation shows about the goals which there is a beneficiaries needs resources problem background and environment and the input evaluation shows about the plans which there is a stakeholders strategies budget coverage and research and the next is the process evaluation which is the action it develop and the first is develop implement monitor and feedback and the last one is the product evaluation which is the outcomes the impact effectiveness transportability sustainability and adjustment so as you can see in the picture that is an example of CIPP model by Staple Beam. So I hope you learned something. Thank you and God bless everyone.